this is section 6.2, binomial distribution. So the binomial distribution is a probability distribution that describes the number of success in a fixed number of independent trials. And each trial has only two possible outcomes, success or failure. So number of trials are independent. Uh, each one of them is either success or failure. And then the probability of success for each trial is always the same. And uh, we are going to learn how to find the mean and a standard deviation for a uh, binomial distribution as well. So in order for us to understand this better and to understand what is number of trial, what is the probability of success, we are going to look at an example. And this example would be uh, flipping an unfair coin two, three times. So flipping an unfair unfair point three times. So you might ask, what is unfair? Uh, unfair, the reason I used unfair coin because I want the example to be more interesting. Um, a fair coin, when you flip it, the probability of getting a head is 50% and getting, the, getting a tail is also 50%. When I say it's unfair coin, then maybe getting a head is more than 50% and therefore getting a tail is going to be less. So if I make the probability of getting a head 60%, then the probability of getting a tail becomes 40%. If I change head to 20%, 0.2, then tail would be one minus 0.2, which is 0.8. So that's what I mean by being unfair. That means one is going to have a higher probability than the other. So I'm just going to randomly pick a number for this unfair coin. And let's say uh, for this unfair coin, probability of getting a head is 60%. So Let's say I'm interested in number of heads. So therefore, for this example, probability of getting a head, I'm going to use P of edge, is our success. Maybe you're doing this experiment, and then you would say, oh, probability of tail is what I'm interested in. So then you would say probability of getting a tail is the success. So success does not mean anything like, you know, the way we uh, understand success. For instance, if I am looking at a particular car and I say the probability of a car, uh, a type of car breaking down on the first year is 20%, then at that situation, probability of success is 20%, but really right now, breaking, uh, breaking if a car breaks is not a success necessarily, so then success is not always a positive thing. And in this case, getting a head or a tail, neither one of them is a success or a failure, but when we are doing binomial distribution, we are going to have either or. So probability of getting a head is point six. He said the 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 coin is unfair, so the probability of getting a head is higher. Then probability of not getting a head, 
not getting ahead, that means probably you're getting a tail, that's the same thing, is 1 minus 0 0.6, which is 0 0.4. So, and we are flipping a coin three times, and each time you flip a coin is an independent event, because the first time I either get head or tail, the second time getting a head or tail has nothing to do with the first time, the third time getting a head or tail has nothing to do with the previous two times. So that's why this independent, these are independent events. So therefore, this is going to be a binomial distribution. We have either or outcome. Either we get a head 60% of the time, or we are going to get a tail 40%. So when you add these two, you should always come up with one, and you only should have two outcomes. Then the number of trials in this case is three. We are flipping the coin three times. If I flip the coin four times, then the number of trials is four. So let's just stick with three and write all the possibilities of flipping a coin three times. So the first possibility is that I get... Um, tail, tail, tail. That means I have zero head. The next time is I get one head, one tail, another tail. The next time is I get a tail, a head, and a tail. Then there's also this possibility that I get tail the first time, tail the second time, head last time or I could get head, head the first two times, tail the last, or tail, head, head, or maybe head, tail, head. Or I get head, head, head. There is no other possibilities when you flip a coin three times. So remember, in this scenario, n is three, and this situation, probability of getting head is always given to you. And in this case, we call it P, that is probability of getting head, is 0.6. So you're always looking for these two numbers. These two numbers are something that every problem should give you. Number of trials. The trials are independent, and it happens three times. And the probability of getting that outcome that you're looking for, which we call it success, and is always not a positive thing, is 0.6. For instance, I told you probability of a car being broken uh, when it is um, manufactured on year one is 20%. So again, that is the success of P becomes 0.2. So anyways, let's go back to our example. Those are the two numbers we have. And this is for zero head. These are one head. These are when we have two heads. And this is when we have one head, three heads. So I want to find the probability of the first scenario having all tails. So if I want to find what is the probability of getting a tail and a tail and a tail, it is probability of getting tail times probability of getting tail times probability of getting tail. Because these are independent events. And if I want to find out what is the probability of getting a tail and tail and tail, I have to multiply these. And the answer would be 0.4 to the power 3 because we multiplied 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Because if probability of getting a head is 0.6, probability of getting a tail is 0.4. So we multiply 0.4 by itself three times, or 0.4 to the power three. Finding this scenario of getting head, so I have this one, which is probability again. I'm not going to write all of them. I'm just going to write a few of them. So for this scenario, we have probability of getting a head and a tail, and a tail. 
So you find the probability of getting a head times you multiply by probability of getting a tail times probability of getting a tail. So we have three independent events. So therefore, to find the probability of this situation, you multiply the three of them. Head is 0 0.6, this one is 0 0.6, this one is 0 0.4, and this one is 0 0.4. So we have 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 to the power 2, or like that. To find this situation, we get a probability of getting a tail, head, tail. Then it is probability of getting a tail times probability of getting a head times probability of getting a tail. So again, we have a 0 0.6 here, 0 0.4 here, 0 0.4 here. So we multiply those. And the third one. What is the probability of getting a tail, tail, head? It is probability of tail, probability of tail, probability of head. This is 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. I don't know if you have noticed, all three of these, this one, you have two, two, 0.4 to the power of two, you have two point fours here, and you have two point fours here. So you have three kinds of the same thing. You have three, three, point four to the power two times point six. Because here you have these two point fours, you have a point four here and here, and the same for the first one. So all three of these have three times you have two. 0.4s and 1.6, so you have three of them. And if you multiply these three together, you will get an answer. For this one, the same thing. I'm going to write the first one, head, head, tail. So you're going to have two heads and one tail. And the same thing here. You're going to have two heads, one tail. Here you have two heads, one tail. So you're going to have three of these. And probability of head is 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. Probability of tail is 0 0.4. And the same thing for this one is going to be 2.6s and 1.4. Here you're going to have 2.6s and 1.4. So you're going to have three of these because we have three situations like that. So probability of getting two heads is going to be, I'm going to write it here probability of getting zero head is just one situation is 0.4 to the power three. Probability of getting one head. It was this one. We have three of these 0.4s, or I can just write it like these 2.4s and 1.6. Probability of getting two heads. We have three situations that we have two point sixes and one point four. And probability of having three heads it is equal to <clears throat> this one, which is probability of head, head, and head. Since they're independent events, you have P of H times P of H times P of H. And each one of them is 0 0.6, 0 0.6, and 0 0.6. So we get 0 0.6 to the power of 3. If I calculate this number, 0 0.6 to the power 3 times 0 0.6 uh, times 0.4, I get 4.432 uh, to find for the answer to this one, 3 times 0.4 times 0.4 times 0.6. That one is going to give you 0.288. And then 
this one is going to be 0 0.216 when you raise 0 0.6 to the power 3. And this one is going to be um, 0 0.064. So so I have to follow now if I um ask the following questions. What is the probability of getting at least two heads? Then at least two heads means getting two heads, also three heads. And we can't put more than that, three heads or two heads. We cannot have you know, four heads because we are flipping the coin three times. So at least two means two and three. Three is the most. So we have P of two plus P of three. So the way you find the answer here for P of two, we have 0 0.432. And for P of three, we have 0.216. And we find the answer, which is going to be six and two is eight. One and three is 4, 2, and 4 is 6, so we get 0.648. If they ask you to find the probability of having more than, more than one head, for this one, having more than one head, that means also P of 2 plus P of 3. So more than or at least two, these two are the same thing. More than one, in this case would be P of two plus P of three, at least two heads, that means P of two plus P of three. Other, and the answer would be obviously the same. If it says what is the probability of having at most two heads, so at most two, that means zero, one, and two. So always write out these things for yourself. So you have to find P of zero, plus having one head, plus probability of having two heads. So we have the answer for zero head. We have 0 0.064. Finding one head, we go to point two eight eight. Having three heads, uh, two heads, and sorry, zero head, one head, and then for two heads, we have 0.43. And then we add these numbers. So I have 432 to 88, and these are all the same. So we add this, we get 14. Six and eight is 14. 15, 6 and 17, 18. 4 and 2 is 6 and 1 is 7. So the answer is 0. 0.784. So it's about 78% chance. So probability of having fewer than two heads. Fewer than two would be 0 and 1. So always read the sentence and write the numbers so you understand what you're doing. Fewer than two is zero and one. And then you find probability of zero plus probability of one. Probability of zero in our case is 0 0.064. From here, probability of one is 0 0.288. So we have to add these two numbers. That is 12. 6 and 8 is 14, and 1 is 15. So we get 0.352. What is the probability of having 
exactly one half. We already have the answer here, this one. Having exactly one head, that's the answer. I will go with you. So it's point two eight. But it's not always easy to create these conclusions that I did. I had to read the problem, find and find P, then do this, and then find the probability of each one, and then calculate that. Because imagine instead of three times flipping a coin, this could have been 10 times flipping a coin. Then I'm going to have so many of these possibilities and writing it by hand is not a feasible way of doing it. It's super time consuming. So for that reason, we are going to use the TI calculator. There are two functions that we are all going to use. One is called binomial. PDF. And another one is called binomial. CDF. So the job of binomial PDF is we give it the N, that is the how many times you flip a coin, how many cars you're looking at. P is the probability of success. In our case, we said getting ahead is success and 60%. So in our, for binomial PDF, we would have to 3. For P, we would have to 0.6. And if I was looking to find out what is the probability of getting one head, I would have put one or x. So this, if I if I put these numbers for binomial PDF, this is going to equal to getting one head. Probability of getting one head is binomial PDF with those numbers. So we will put three. For that, we will put point six. And for x, we will put 1, because we are interested in 1. So when we want to find the probability of one situation, one head, or if I want to find the probability of getting two heads, just for one of these four situations, either 0 head, 1 head, 2 head, uh, or um, 0 head, 1 head, 2 head, or 3 heads, we use binomial PDF. And we put the number of heads here. So if I put two here, then probability of two heads, we already did it, is going to be 0. 0.432. Because we're looking for one situation. If I still find the probability of one head, so I would change this to one, and I would get 0.288. So I recommend you test that on your calculator. And I will tell you how to get it in a moment. Then this one binomial CDF is called the cumulative. So we are going to add a bunch of them. So if I ask find binomial CDF, n is 3, p is 0.6, and x is 2, that means find probability of 0 plus probability of 1 plus probability of 2. So this is when I say fewer than 3 or at most two. So this is finding probability of at most two heads. So that means zero, one, and two. And it does, the calculator does the job for you. It goes and it finds P of zero. It, all of it is going to be done in the calculator. You won't see anything. All you see at the end is the answer, which is this one. I'm not going to rewrite it. So you get 0.784. As I told you, you're just going to add these numbers. You won't. The calculator will. And this is what you will get. 
to the 3.784. Your calculator may be different. So um, let me tell you how you would use your calculator. For this one, you're going to go to second, wars. And then you do second key and then bars. On top of bars, there's a distribution in blue. So you go to the distribution. Once you're in the distribution, you have a normal PDF, normal CDF, inverse norm, dot, dot, dot. I think the option eight or nine, you have to go down. There's a binomial PDF, and then there's a binomial CDF. Let's say I want to answer this question. Find a probability of getting at least two heads. At least two heads means two, probability of getting two heads, plus getting probability of getting three heads. So if I want to find this one, I have two methods of getting it. I could use binomial PDF. So when I go to second wars and then I go through the distribution, I use the arrow key, I find this binomial PDF right now. And I click place, P, uh, I press enter. And then I see either you have a calculator that is going to show you something like this. So it's waiting for you to put your n, in our case is 3, p, in our case is 0. 0.6, and then I'm going to do 2, and then press enter, and then you do this one more time, binomial pdf, 3, 0. 0.6, comma, 3, and then you put enter. So you get the number from this one, and then you get the number from this one, and you add them up. So this one was 0 0.216. And uh, the other one is 0 0.432. So you add these two, and that gives you the answer to this question. However, your calculator, after you press binomial PDF enter, it may look like this. Enter N, which is number of trials, you put three as you find the probability of success, which P is 0.6. It asks you to put uh, your number or your X or your R, and that would be in this case two. And then you will calculate or press enter to calculate, and then you run this again. This time you put N is three, P is 0. 0.6, and your number X is also three, and you run it again. So you see these three and three are the same as these, and here you have three and two, so three goes here, so the two goes there. So one time you change this to three, one time you change it to two, to find both of them, and then you add your answers. Another way of finding this one is using binomial CDF. But binomial CDF, the way it works, so you give it number of trials, you put 0. 0.6, and if I put the two here, what it does, that's what the way it works. It's going to find probability of zero plus probability of one plus probability of this number two. So it starts from zero, goes all the way to this number. If I change this to one, then it's just going to find these two. <clears throat> but if you remember from this example, I said probability of having at least two. At least two means probability of two plus probability of two. I told you how to find it using binomial PDF for two, binomial PDF for three to answer the question. But also you could use binomial CDF, and if you say binomial CDF1 here, it's going to find the P0 and P1, and P0 and P1 are complement of these two. 
all in all, we have four. We have P0, P of 1, P of 2 head, and P of 3 head. These are the maximum. If you add them all up, you get one. So the complement of these two are these two. So when it says binomial, uh, find probability of having at least two heads, and two heads starts with two and then goes to three, I don't have a function in the calculator to find these two for me all at once, unless I do binomial PDF for that, binomial PDF for three, and then add them up. I don't have one function that finds two of them together. But what I could do is find the complement of these two, complement of these two, which is that one, using binomial CDF. So binomial CDF 3.61 is going to find these two. And then I subtract them from 1. So 1 minus binomial CDF, binomial CDF of 3.6 and 1 is going to give me these two. And if I go 1 minus these two, it's going to give me the leftover, which is P of 2 and P of 3. So I stop here, and you can look at the homework problems to understand how to use your calculator and how to use binomial CDF and binomial PDF for your homework.